Welcome to 7.5 Rational Exponents and Radicals. Our goal is that we can rewrite expressions involving radicals and rational exponents. So to begin, let me jog your memory and remind you that we talked about rational exponents in section 7.2, so feel free to re refer back to your notes, 7.2. Um, remember, a rational exponent is a fraction exponent, so you can put that in parentheses to remind yourself, fractional exponent. Now you will see today that radicals and fractional exponents or rational exponents are related to each other. So focus your attention at the picture at left. There are three different pieces to a radical expression. We have the index, that is the number in the top left corner right in front of the radical symbol. Then we have the radical sign, which is the check mark division looking symbol. And then lastly, the number underneath that radical sign is the radicand. So right now we're going to focus on the index. Remember, the index is the number in front of that radical sign. The index gives the degree of the root, so basically the size. For a cube root, the degree is 3. So an example of this would be cube root of 27. The 3 is right in front. That means cube root. For a square root, it looks like this, but actually we normally do not put the 2 in front. So you are used to just seeing like square root of 4 written like that. There is an invisible 2 in front, but it's not written. So remember, if there is no index, the degree is 2, and that is called a square root. Now let's look at a couple examples. Since 5 squared is equal to 25, we know that the square root of 25 is 5. Now another way to write square root of 25 is 25 to the 1 half. We looked at fractional exponents back in 7.2, so I, I remember mentioning to you in that video that whenever you raise something to the 1 half power, that's the exact same thing as taking the square root. So square root of 25 is the same thing as 25 to the 1 half. Now for the next one, cube root of 8, that equals 3, or sorry, 2, that equals 2 if it'll let me write it. It's not looking so good. That's a 2 right there. <laughs> okay, I was able to write a good 2. So the, the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 to the third, which equals 2 times 2 times 2, is 8. So remember, taking the square root and squaring something is the opposite. Taking the cube root and cubing something is the opposite. Um, they are all opposites of each other. Okay, let's take a look at some of these problems. We're going to be using two different methods. The first method that I'm going to show you is keeping everything under the radical. Uh, and after you see both methods, you can choose which one ever you know, works best for you. So cube root of 125. What you have to do is keep the 3 in front and think to yourself, what number to the third gives me 125. So what you're doing is you're looking for the same number three times that multiplies to give you 125. And hopefully you can figure out it is the number 5. 5 to the third equals 125, so the cube root of 125 is equal to 5. So the way that that works is when you see there's a 3 outside that uh, index, you're looking for 3 of the same number that gives you the, num the big number underneath. And once you take the cube root, you're just taking out one of those fives, and that's the answer. Here's another method, um, the fourth root of 16. We can rewrite that as 16 to the 1 fourth. And the reason why is because we have that, there's like an invisible 1 right next to the 16 as the exponent. Obviously, we don't need to write that normal, but I want to show you it's there. Uh, so to take away the radical symbol, you take that 1 and put it up top in the fraction, and you take that 4 in front of the radical and put it in the bottom. So I'll just show you, like, that goes there, and that goes right there. That's always how it works. Um, and now you can see we don't have a radical, we just have a fractional exponent. So what we're doing right here is we're trying to figure out what times itself, times itself, times itself, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, gives you 16. And the answer is 2. 2 times itself, times itself, times itself equals 
16, so the fourth root, or 16 to the 1 fourth, is equal to 2. Um, just in case you are curious about how this works for other problems, I'll show you a few quick ones. They are very fast problems. Uh, the cube root of 23, sorry, 27, I'm thinking about the answer already, is 3 times 3 times 3 underneath. So that means the cube root of 27 equals 3. Uh, let's see another one. The fifth root of 32. Well, what number do you multiply by itself 5 times in order to give you 32? And the answer is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Whoa is equal to 32, so that means the fifth root of 32 is 2. Okay, let's move on. Now, so far in today's lesson, you have seen the fraction in the exponent have a numerator of 1. And that's been really ideal. Now, sometimes there is not a 1 there. So now I'm going to show you what happens when there's not a 1. Like I said, sometimes in the numerator, the top of the fraction in the exponent is not equal to 1. An example of this would be 2 thirds. Suppose that we had the expression 8 to the 2 thirds. We can rewrite this expression as the cube root of 8 squared. So just like the example I showed you in the previous slide, the 2, the top of the fraction, goes underneath the radical as a regular exponent. And the 3 in the bottom of the fraction is always the index, the number in front of the radical. Now this can also be written as the cube root of 8 all raised to the second. So it's your choice which way works better for you. They mean the exact same thing. The 2 can go under the radical or the 2 can be the exponent on the very outside. Now the key concept below is the exact same thing except with variables I think it would be easier to focus on this 8 example versus just variables. Now let's look at an example that involves all of this. Part A, what is 12a to the 2 thirds in, ex in radical form? So right now we're given exponential. And as you can see, that 2 thirds is only going to the a. It is not going to the 12. If it was going to the 12, there would be parentheses around the whole thing. So, like I said before, the 12 is not under anything. It's just in front. The part that we need to fix is this 2 thirds. So, we're going to take the 2 thirds and make a radical. The 3 is going to go outside. It's the bottom. And the 2 is going to go right next to the a. So, a squared. We cannot do anything else to reduce this, so that means that's as far as we can go. 12 times the cube root of a squared. And you know you can't go any further when the exponent next to the variable under the radical is smaller than the index on the outside. Part B. What is 64a quantity to the 4 fifths? As you can see this time, the 64a is surrounded by parentheses. This means that the 4 fifths goes to both terms inside of the parentheses. So the first thing that I'm going to do is rewrite 64 as 32 times 2. Now the reason why I'm doing this, I actually showed you on the previous slide or before that, that the fifth root of 32 is 2. So do you see how there's a 5 in the bottom? That means we're going to be taking the fifth root. So instead of writing 64, I'm going to write 32 times 2a to the 4 fifths. So the only thing that changed right now is I split up the 64 into 32 times 2. And you know that equals 64. Now we're going to share this 4 fifths with everything inside the parentheses. So that means we have 32 to the 4 fifths times 2a to the 4 fifths. Now of course you can share the 4 fifths to the 2 and the a, but we're just going to wait a little bit. Now 32 is equal to, I'll write this on the side, 2 to the fifth. 
So we're going to replace that 32 by 2 to the 5th, and everything else stays the same. And in previous lessons in this chapter, we learned that when you have a, an exponent and another exponent on the outside, like a power raised to another power, you multiply. So right here, we're going to be multiplying. So that means we have 2, I'll, I'll do this on the side, 2 to the 5th times 4 fifths. The 5s cancel out, so that means we just have 2 to the 4th. So that expression on the left side is just going to be 2 to the 4th, which is much nicer looking. And lastly, let's keep the 2a to the 4 fifths. And we know that 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. We can't do anything else uh, with the 2a, so we're just going to make it into radical form. Remember, the bottom of the fraction goes in front of the radical. So 5, so 5th root of 2a to the 4th. And remember, in part A of this example, I showed you that when the number under the radical is smaller than the number in front of the radical, you can't do anything else. So that is our simplified form in radical expression. Okay, I know this is challenging, so just bear with me. We're getting through this, and I'll help you during class when we go over this. What is the fifth root of b to the third in exponential form? Well, you're in luck, because this is really quick. Um, exponential form just means we have a fraction in the exponent. So as I mentioned so far in this lesson, the number inside goes on top, and the number outside goes on bottom. So the answer is b to the 3 fifths. They mean the exact same thing, so you can go back and forth if you need to. Okay, part B, what is the cube root of 27d to the 5th in exponential form? First thing I'm going to do is notice that there is an invisible 1 out there. So I'm going to rewrite this as a fractional exponent. It's going to be 27d to the 5th all raised to the 1 third. Remember, this 1 is going right there, and that 3 is going on the bottom. So now we have 27d to the 5th raised to the 1 -third. Yes, we're going to share that 1 -third, so it's going to be 27 to the 1 -third and d to the 5th times 1 -third. 27 to the 1 -third is 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. And lastly, we just need to multiply the 5 and the 1 -third and we get 5 thirds. So that's our answer. Uh, a few other quick ones, just so you know what some others look like. The third root of s squared in exponential form would just be s to the two-thirds. And I think we'll just stop there. So now let's just go on to example four. Here's an example um, of an, a real-life application, and it's biology. You can estimate the metabolic rate of living organisms based on body mass using Kleber's rule or law. The formula R equals 73.3 times the fourth root of M to the third relates the metabolic rate R measured in calories per day to body mass M measured in kilograms. What is the metabolic rate of a dog with a body mass of 18 kilograms? I know at first glance this is like a really intimidating weird problem but actually it's not too bad because you're just plugging in a number for the formula. So it tells us that the body mass is 18 kilograms. So that means what we're going to do is substitute 18 for m. So we have 73.3 uh, times the fourth root of 18 to the third. Now, to get it out of radical form, we're going to use the process I showed you on the previous couple slides. Take the 18 and raise it to the 3 fourths. Because remember, the number inside the radical and the exponent goes to the top, and the number in front of the radical goes to the bottom. That's always how it is. Use a calculator to simplify. And that's going to give us approximately 640.56. 
So the metabolic rate of this dog is about 641 calories per day. That completes our lesson. If you feel comfortable, comfortable with these problems, feel free to try the lesson check for this section. If not, just review your notes once more and come in tomorrow with the previous lesson check done. No worries if you are confused or overwhelmed with this stuff. We will have plenty of practice, so if you, come with your questions tomorrow.